you will probably never forget your first low or your first job, your first high, your first climb, or your first orgasm. If you have managed to fall in love again, you may notice that it just doesn't compare to that very first time, at least with regard to intensity and memorability. If you're in a long-term relationship, you may notice the same. When you think about the first few months of your dating and sex life, so what happened? In this Brain Snack, I hope to answer just that, as we explore how your brain is wired to respond to rewarding stimuli and what that means for love, for lunch, and likes on IG. The dopaminergic reward system is highly preserved in mammals, which means that it works in pretty much the same way whether you're a human or a mountain pygmy possum. <laughs> this is a system that rewards us for doing things that promote our survival, like eating, having sex, and taking care of babies. What separates our reward system from other animals, though, is the massive amount is a massive amount of new age rewards that our brains are forced to deal with today. For instance, no other animal gets excited about late model cars or the heavenly smell of Barnes and Nobles. Hmm. So to simplify how the system works, let's use a fairly simple organism, a monkey. Now this monkey has just figured out that when he presses a button twice, he gets a raisin. Whoa, hell yeah. That element of surprise and being surprised with food at that causes 10 units of dopamine to be released from a brain region called the nucleus accumbens. The monkey continues to press the button twice, getting his rewarding raisin and releasing about 10 units of dopamine each time. But hold up. In one case, he presses the button twice and gets two raisins. This man goes nuts with excitement. A double dose of raisins results in a corresponding 20 units of dopamine being released from his brain. This is his brain telling him to continue doing whatever it is he's doing. Eventually though, as he continues to get the same reward for his work, dopamine release settles back down to his baseline of 10 units and it stays there until the researchers wanted to know what would happen if we went back down to giving him just one raisin so they did and this time dopamine release plummeted to levels even below his baseline in some cases it was hardly released at all so the same raisin that made him so happy just a few trials ago made him virtually miserable now this is exactly what happens when the 300 likes we were once delighted to get on a photo leave us mortified or at least ambivalent now this is our world of habituation where nothing is ever as good as that first time and where we need ever increasing awards to make and keep us happy. This explains why that baddie that you've been trying forever to get all of a sudden doesn't seem that interesting once you've had her for a while or that bad. It explains why we rarely feel that, that intense, heart-thumping passion we felt when we first fell in love, or why the raging butterflies of a new relationship eventually fade into tiny flutters. Habituation explains why predictable reward systems, where you're guaranteed to get this if you do that, end up being terrible tools for classroom and workforce management in the long run. It's why unpredictable rewards, like those given in gamble houses and in my classroom, end up being much more powerful motivators. Like gambling, though, habituation does have the power to drive addiction. As you're ever increasing tolerance drives you to seek rewards that are more and more rewarding or at least rewarding as that first time now this is fine for monkeys and raisins but the dilemma with human beings is that we've created stimuli so rewarding so much more rewarding than anything that our ancestors and the brains that they gave us are used to drugs casinos shopping malls shopping carts notifications of new youtube subscribers but especially drugs these all result in massive amounts of dopamine release in the brain sometimes a thousand fold higher than anything evolutionary history or even ancient history could drum up the result Result, a profound emptiness in many areas of our lives as habituation will eventually occur even with such sizable rewards. This is the neurological basis of overconsumption of goods, of overeating, of overspending. The more we get, the more we literally want. Luxuries become necessities and today's pleasures become tomorrow's annoyances. This fact manifests itself in so many areas of our modern lives, from dating to dining to parenting and beyond. So it's important that we understand not only the ways that habituation influences our decisions, but also how to mitigate its influence on our behavior. Or if you're a guy or a girl, kind of keep that special someone interested in you for that much longer, how to mitigate habituation's influence on the behaviors of others. You can find out how to do that in my next Brain Snack. If you found anything useful or interesting in this video, please like and comment. Let me know what it is. And if you think someone else will find it useful, don't forget to share your snacks with them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.